Welcome to another Arius Wave update. So I'm posting this video now just a little bit earlier than normal, just because in Melbourne we, we are heading into another lockdown as of midnight, so we're just sort of scrambling around to do our usual things before lockdown, you know, aka the shopping and the toilet paper. Just kidding. Um, so basically, just wanted to give you an update whilst I can, whilst I'm still in the office here. Uh, basically, we have seen a move down, which I anticipated, but I did say in the last video that we will not break the red line, right? Otherwise, this count is invalidated, okay? So as you've seen it, it's come close, but it hasn't actually gone beneath it. So from here, we need to see a move higher, nothing below the red line, anything above it is fine. Uh, I can't give you time frames on how quick this is going to go up because nobody can do that. Nobody has a crystal ball. Um, waves do take time. I can just tell you what the waves are and what waves we've seen so far. And we just use it as evidence to suggest um, what else could be going on. In case I'm wrong, there's always an alternate count, but I try to give you the count that best fits the picture in uh this chart and also the XLM BTC chart. Okay. So just because I want to keep it on the XLM USD chart for today, um, I just want to also men just re mention that the, the green line is the start of wave one. Okay. Oops. Sorry. One sec. My computer just jumps everywhere whenever I try to do something and show you. Never does it for me. It's just this weird thing that happens. So let's just say, for example, down here where that green line starts is wave one and right here is wave two. Okay, so if that is the end of wave two, technically we cannot see a break below this red line. And I did explain yesterday that anything above this is actually wave two expand, expanded correction, right? So therefore, um, it, it's just showing that there is strength in the market. So what is it doing right now? Okay, I'm not going to get into the small degree count here because it could be like a one and an ongoing two, which will expand again. Um, but I, I really don't want to try and um, do that at this point, especially when we're still looking at this red line. But I do want to draw to attention something that I use sometimes in these situations, and that's the 500 and 1,000 period moving average. I do find them way more useful than the usual 100, 200 moving average. I find that to be just a little bit too small of a time frame um, to be dealing with, um, especially on a five minute chart. So as you can see, it went, oh, sorry, one sec. It went below the 1000 period moving average, which is the white line. And then it's kind of come back and now it's trying to fight to get back above it, right? So, you know, just I just thought I'd add another degree of, you know, understanding to, you know, the waves, right? We don't use, I don't use indicators as my first point of reference. It's always the waves. But sometimes I like to see what's holding, what's, what's, what's causing price action to behave the way that it does, right? So I draw in certain channels at certain times, usually around significant points. So the reason why we have the blue channel is because it's this is the D and E. So technically, this shouldn't be a channel, but I just thought I'd draw that in this time, right? We already saw a break of the highs, so to me, this is already confirmed. So anything that goes below that, like I've mentioned in my previous video, is just going to do this until we break higher, okay? Now... In this particular case, after what we saw last night, after the previous update, we saw it started to move down and then basically here we are now. Okay, so let's just move to the minute chart because we can on the videos. We are sort of heading back towards uh, just starting to move up slowly, 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 right? So there's no real getting worried at this point. It just seems to be floating around 
hasn't broken the idea yet, hasn't hasn't invalidated it. So to me, it's just like okay, it wants to fluff around for a bit longer. No problem. It's still in it's still in its um probably in its corrective portion of whatever move it's doing. Now you could look at this as a one A B C D E pattern, and then we're just sort of going to start moving up in wave three, right? But um, don't want to get ahead of myself there. Just giving you a sort of like an like an idea, a rough perspective, okay? So also on the one hour, the 500 period moving average is still above the 1,000. So to me, that's still in a bullish trend. I do expect this thing to start going back toward that that um you know it's kind of like the average mean reversion area which tends to happen all the time i mean if you look back through the charts it's always just bouncing around this area and it's always just coming back to it for some reason okay and we all know why it's because of the waves okay so in this case it's gone far below it so to me it's only rational thinking logical thinking that this thing is heading back towards that area and because of the wave count we are expecting it to go higher and then basically create the d wave which will then make this uh, moving average basically start to basically turn to the upside eventually right like so so i mean that's just that's just assumption at the moment we need to see the waves first to be able to to be able to understand that kind of thing. But um, I thought I'd give you just a different perspective just because, like I said, uh, we're scrambling in Melbourne at the moment in Australia, just um, doing a few things there before the end of the day. Um, but yeah, it's pretty interesting though how we have seen this play out to the point where it hasn't actually broken through the red line and if you're using the good old candles the steve nissen candle methodology using the japanese candles you have seen here what appears to be a hammer and a green candle confirmation with another green candle confirmation that's a morning star pattern also at the small degree so i only like to look at um candles typically when it's at an an important area uh, I typically don't like using candles all the time because to me they are a secondary um, sort of you know indicator same as the moving averages um, uh, same as the candles and same as like RSI or whatever they tend to be roughly sometimes I look at them but mainly it's the waves if I don't see the waves I do not bother with that stuff because it doesn't work. Using indicators on their own, they'll only get you in trouble. Using the candles on their own, they'll only, they'll only, only get you in trouble. Same with moving averages. But if you use the waves, they will definitely give you the perspective. And then you can use those secondary measures to sort of help you along with um, understanding why, how, and when. So... Back to that five minute chart quickly so we can finish up. We can see that it's just kind of fighting to get above that area. It didn't want to break below the previous low. It wanted to come back and actually go back up. So once it gets past this area, I do believe there will be like a little bit of a in between 500 and 1000 price action, a little bit of a a little bit of this going on before a squeeze happens and then it starts moving up. Uh, but I will keep you updated on these waves at the moment. They aren't the clearest. It could be a one, two pattern or it could be like a one A and B's in progress type pattern. I don't like typically giving too much away at the small degree because it's not always easy to do. In this particular instance, I it, it sprung out at me. So I thought I'd share it. If something else springs out at me, maybe in the next video, I will share it. But it's always best to learn the waves yourself because they are basically, they're a tool that you will use for the rest of your 
trading career and, or even as an observer, chartist, um, whatever it is, understanding what's going on, whatever, whatever is your motivation. Not everybody's motivated by money. Some people just love to learn uh, different phenomenons, as I've noticed. Um, and, and I agree, the waves are intriguing, right? The money's great. But knowing the waves is even better because you understand something that not a lot of people do understand. So that's why I love them and that's why I teach them. So hopefully you found this video interesting and informative. Thank you for watching.